All right, Kiera. Yeah. Or also known as Kelly on my channel. Yeah. Um, that was your that was your street name that you asked me to use. Yeah. Back then, but a lot has gone on since you and I spoke almost a year ago. Yeah. That was Christmas Eve that you and I met. Mm-hmm. Uh, so first, before we even get into what's going on in your life today, let's let's address what there, there was this kind of. I don't know what they call it, but a lot of people claimed your story was untrue. And, and I, I, I have my ideas as to why that happened. What, 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 are your, what are your thoughts on it? Honestly, I just think people, they don't know. So, or I don't, honestly, they think that I did it for money. Or... Well, you didn't do it for the money because you didn't know that there was a GoFundMe right. connected to your campaign. But people don't I did, know that, was that. A, that was something I did and didn't tell anyone. You didn't know. People don't, but people don't know that, so they assume that, you know, that I did it for money. It was money. actually, I told you when it was $12,000, and you told me to stop it at, at 13000 I think. Yeah. Which I didn't do. I let it go to twenty eight. In, in two days, it went up to 28000 and then I stopped it. But, it went up It went up really fast, so, of course, people thought I did it for money and for clout, but I don't care. I don't let things like that face me because I know what I've been through, you know? Yeah, I, I learned a lot from social media through you. Yeah. Because I was ready to, let's do a video and, and show the scars in front of your ears. Let's show them your foster, pa you know, the, the paperwork showing your foster uh, yeah. system history and show them this, that, and the other. And you, you said, no, don't do a thing. Just let it go. Haters are going to Because I knew it would like die down. And then we have, I have more believers than, you know, accusers. So it's just like, I don't care. I know my truth. I know what I've been through. So, you know, I don't, I'm not going to let people that don't even know me, you know. Here's a couple things to consider if, if anyone is doubting your story. If you had a tight relationship with your, so apparently there were pictures of you and your mom or your grandmom on, on uh, And me and my Facebook. mom from, like, well, your, mom, your mom is still from, alive. Right. From, so you, you can get together for the holidays and take a picture yeah, with your mom. Yeah, for holidays. You, that's it's, it's the Facebook. Only, that's what people do. Yeah, that's why they're posted. They, those are times that obviously meant something you know but if you were if you if you had a tight relationship with your family why would you be spending christmas with a white dude that you met the day before why would you be I, living didn't, on, I didn't spend my christmas with anyone but my boyfriend why would you why would you be living on the street in a tent for a month for a month you were and then people doing that uh, two months maybe yeah i don't know people well, whatever there's a washington post article that's i'll leave in the link of the description <laughs> people can read it and see that your story is true except you've got the year of your foster system Wrong. You were. You said it was six and it was five, or vice versa. I'm not sure what. It was. But I was young at that age. Yeah, you know? no, you don't so remember. of course I'm just. I'm so, speaking let's, what let's, I've been through. You so know. So let's, let's let's move on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I love the way you handled it though. Thanks. That was, that was. I learned a lot from that. Yeah. Um, so. You got twenty eight thousand dollars bit by bit for through the GoFundMe. I'm sure you appreciate it, all the donors Definitely, that helped you. Definitely, I appreciate that. Thank you to everyone that supported. Thank you to all the ones that actually believe my story, you know, the ones that are actually genuine. I appreciate it. It really helped me out. <clears throat> I was yeah. able to get an apartment. I was able to get a car. You know, it really helped me get, get on my feet. Yeah, and you've done a great job since then, as we'll get into. Uh, you're now living in an apartment far from South Central LA, far from Skid Row. Yeah. In a neighborhood that's very safe and It'll normal. It'll be a nice. year that I've been living there too in February so yeah no you're doing a great job I, I, I you and I speak almost every at least once or twice a week now yeah. every week and and I see what you're doing I see how hard you're working you've had three jobs since since this all happened yeah we helped you get off the street the yeah. donors did and myself yeah. and we got you of into course, a great situation you I'm sorry I said of course you too you yeah no, so I, much. I do my people part. always ask me does Mark help you does hey does that guy help you I'm always like yeah like he helps me a lot a lot. Yeah, but like, I don't want this to be about a, I don't want this yeah, to turn into a help channel. Of course, but yeah. So I, I tend to not show that. I, yeah. I don't want to show that stuff. Yeah. So, but I do help people. Um, but you've had, you got one job and then COVID came and you lost that job because they closed the stores you were working in. You got another job and then the same thing happened again. And today you're working as what? Um, a caregiver for the elderly. For like uh, for Alzheimer's patients and things like that? Dementia, you know, bedridden people. Um, people, all different types of, you know, 
I don't know all of the terms yet because I'm still in training. You know, I still have to obtain those certificates and things like that. So I'm going to those classes. Yeah, to but you're attain. working six days a week. Yeah, six days a week. In fact, I'm tired. You're, you're tired today because you were just. Yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> it's my off day. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, but so, t t you know, because I've interviewed, I think I counted it yesterday. I've interviewed like over 200 women that work the streets, mostly on Figueroa Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you, what, 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 what got you out? I mean, you, you, you're very different than all the other girls who are still working the street. They, they haven't broken free of that lifestyle. Well, and you were determined to do it. Honestly, I think for me, it's because I didn't, I didn't want to be in that lifestyle, you know? Like that wasn't something that I wanted to continue doing. You know, I felt the pain of that lifestyle. You know, I felt the struggle of that lifestyle. So it's like, you know, I, I didn't want to do that anymore. I wanted to change. You know, I watch TV or I watch social media, you know, and I see different things that I want to, you know, you know, obtain. I want to be in life. So, you know, I just pretty much didn't want to do that anymore. So that's why. I stopped and I came down here. You know, I ran away from, you you know, the my the, my aunt last guy and, you know, I came down here to get away and I was I met you and now I'm here. You know, thank God. So, I think it was just pretty much me not wanting to be down there and then on top of that, you know, I I um, I'm like in my head I, I'm headstrong. You are very headstrong. So, yeah. And, and I think that's the real key to what helped you be so focused and determined from breaking out. Because everyone, all the other girls that I've spoken to. And then I think reading books too. Yeah, you read a lot. But, but, but a lot of the girls that I've interviewed that, that worked the streets, uh, mostly on Figueroa, um, have very, very similar stories to yours. Yeah, and they, and, I would and, imagine. And, and their stories, you know, the, the dates are a little different, the views was slightly different, but basically a very similar story to yours. They started at a very young age and, and so on. Yeah. But they're still doing it. And you're, you are so kind of focused and determined and hard-headed in, in a good way. Yeah. Of making a decision and sticking to it. Because I know there were times when, um, because we had problems with GoFundMe because yeah. of all the, all, the, all the claims that you were lying. Yeah. GoFundMe wouldn't release the money for a long time. So, so I had to keep supporting you, but it, it got really awkward at one point where I was like, man, I'm just bleeding money. Yeah. And there was no sign that GoFundMe was going to cooperate. Right. And all the negativity that you were getting made GoFundMe go, well, I don't think, I think this is a scam. Yeah. Because everyone was saying it was a scam. But yeah. uh, I honestly, you know, my, my other thought that I didn't say earlier, all, all the reaction to your video not being true. I, I almost think when some, when viewers, and some viewers, and you got to understand it's a very small percentage. Yeah. But when some viewers watch a video like yours, where here's somebody who is, fighting adversity and doing the right thing for themselves. And that can be getting off the streets, as you did, stopping using drugs, as you did. But it could also be, you know, all the problems people have in relationships and putting up with, with, with less than, you know. Yeah. And they see what they're not doing in your video. Like you're doing what they should be doing. Yeah. And rather than deal with that, they lash out at you and try to knock you down. And I think that might have been the, the, the real thing that was going on with your video. Cause, cause I you're, thought of that too. Because your story is no different than anyone else's. Something similar really. to that, I thought. But of. you got the GoFundMe and they saw you doing the right thing and it's like the whole thing just made everyone go, <laughs> let's knock her down. Yeah. I think there was a lot of that. Because some people may, like, they may look at the video and they're probably like, wow, I just can't imagine this girl going through all of those things. So they, you know, they don't believe it. Or some people may not be happy with themselves, you know, so they may not believe it. But honestly, I don't dwell, I never dwelled on the people that didn't believe me. I never- No, you never did. I never cared about the people that didn't believe me. You know, I only care and I only respond to people that are, you know, supporters or that are being genuine. You know, you, I'll never really know who's really being genuine, but if you're portraying yourself to be genuine and you're being kind and you're coming to me with respect, then of course, you know, if I see, you know, I'll, I'll definitely shop, reach back out and say thank you and how, what I appreciate. You know, I don't, I nev I've never dwelled on the negative comments. Your story is also so heartbreaking. It's, it's hard for some people to deal with. 
Right. You had nothing. Nobody's yeah. helping you in any way. And it's like you persevered and were unwilling to compromise. Yeah. And that's almost what I think the quality that you possess that really helped you break free. Because now yeah. you're living a very, very different life than you did before. And I had support, you know, I was in a low space. I was suicidal. I was a lot, but I came through with, you know, meeting you, you know, and stuff like that. Your boyfriend? Yeah, and um, so. I'm just very proud of you. I think, I think you're, you have all the tools to thrive in life. You just needed a little head start with the, which is what we gave you, so. Yeah. What, what, what do you think helped you the most? I mean, I, I think it's your, your personality of being very hard nosed and. Helped me the most with what? Just getting your life straight. Because so many people can't and don't. I think, I think my mindset and like you said, my personality, um, my my mind's really more so my mindset. I will see things that I want, things that I want to do. You know, it's not fun being out on the street all day. You know, selling your body. That's not some. It's not. It's degrading. It gets tiring. It gets painful. So you know, of course, as a young a woman, well, any young woman in her right mind is going to think, hey, I don't want to do this. Well, you should, you know, I feel like that's not something that you just, but there's a difference. Some girls, they enjoy doing that. You know, it's fun to them. Yeah, it was different. never fun to me. So, you know. But what advice would you give to a, a young woman who's considering doing something like this? Definitely don't do it, you know, it's degrading, you know, um, it's degrading to yourself at a, it comes to a point where it's degrading to yourself. And then, um, you know, you're just better than that. You definitely don't want to sell your body. You're better than that. There's plenty of other things that you can do to, you know, get what you need, get the support you need, you know, definitely don't need to do that. I just, I just wouldn't, I just wouldn't, I would never tell a young woman or a girl to, to sell her body. I would, I would never. So what are the positives and negatives of, because uh, there, are, there are some positives to that, that lifestyle with a lot of negatives. What are the, how do you compare the, like, are you happier today than you were then? Definitely. <laughs> I would think so. Definitely. What are, what are the positives and negatives of each lifestyle? Because you're, you're living a very different life now. The positives of that lifestyle, I would only say is the fast money. I guess. And there's lots of negatives with it. But there's hell of negatives. So out of 100, there is one per that 1% good. And then there's the 99 of bad. That lifestyle comes with a lot. You know, you, you get in a car with someone and that person, you don't know what kind of tip they're on. But next thing you know, you have a gun to your head you know, and you're getting raped. So it's just like that lifestyle is not the lifestyle that you want to live. It's not safe for one. It's not safe for your health. It's not safe for your security. And it's, not, it's degrading. So the downside of where you're at today is maybe you're making a little less money. It's not fast money. It's slow money. It's Uncle Sam's money. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. He takes a bite. But but what are the upsides of, of your new life? Um, I'm happier. Um, I'm in a better space. You know, I'm not degrading myself. The moves that I make are based off of my own mindset. You know, I'm just moving with love and care. I'm in a better space. The people that are around me, you know, they're 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 loving and caring. You know, so I'm just I'm just in a better space. I'm working. You know, I'm a, I'm gonna be moving soon, so I'm just happy. I'm just yeah, building for my future. It's been beautiful to watch your, your your transformation from a lot of a lot of depression, a lot of stress, a lot of negativity, and and just difficulty. And now you're like much more positive and happier and mellow. <laughs> calm. Oh my gosh, thank you. But literally, I don't know why I just thought about how people say, oh. She's lying. She has braces. Braces cost four thousand dollars. Like what? No, they don't. My braces are only two thousand. Well, if you, if you look at the other videos of all the girls that do that for a living, they many of them had braces. Many of them have very expensive nails or very and expensive shoes. And then they shoes. act like there aren't payment plans. I pay a hundred dollars a month for my braces. No, no, it, it's 
it, it's not about the the, the facts. It's, it's just funny. It's, it's yeah, no, it's, it's, <laughs> it's just, just people, funny because as I was smiling, I felt my braces, and then I I know we're doing an interview, so I just thought of that. Haters want to hate. That's what it's about, I think. <laughs> yeah. Do you, what 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 regrets do you have in your life? I wouldn't say I have regrets. I would say I have lessons learned because without without me going through the things that I've went through and without me, you know, going through things, I wouldn't have a I wouldn't have learned a lesson. I wouldn't know not to do that, you know. I wouldn't I wouldn't know, oh no, don't do that because this is going to be the outcome. You know, so I just take everything as a lesson. I kind of pretty much try to live with no regrets, but I I just take everything as a lesson learned. And if I take a L, I eat it. I eat it like a grown woman, you know. But other than that, I just I know I've been through some things. I know I've had you know dirt on my name at at a time, but because of that. But other than that. I don't really have many regrets. It's made you stronger. Yeah, it's what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah. And how's your relationship with your mom today? We're good. We're really good. Um, you know, we talk. I I hit her up every day and stuff like that. So we're great. And what do you, I mean, the foster system story you told was horrifying. What What do you think the solution is to that? Honestly, I think that the social workers need to be more active in the foster children's lives. And um, there shouldn't always be meetings like when the when the foster when the when the social worker comes to visit the child there, sh it shouldn't just be when it, they shouldn't. It shouldn't just be a meeting with the foster parents, the child, and the social worker. It should be a point where it's just the social worker and the child, so the child can feel safe enough to express themselves. And then on top of that, when they do express themselves, and the social worker knows that it's going to be a little time frame before something can be done, they shouldn't. Um, they shouldn't expose or give a reaction to what the child just said because it kind of, you know, it kind of like tells on what the the child just says. So now you never know what's going to, you know, I just feel like it should be more confidentiality. And if I'm saying that word right, and um, did I say it right? You did. Yeah. And, um, and I feel like they should just be more so in their lives and there should be more visits. It shouldn't just be once a month. It should be probably about three a month, three visits a month, I will say. All right, Kiera. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in again. Thank you. I, you didn't want to come in for a long time because it was just there's so much like yeah, cause attention. Have... Your video got like almost yeah. six million views. I don't. I don't want people. I don't. I don't need that. <laughs> you don't need that. Don't Nobody need... needs that. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. It's but, uh, probably go viral again. Ugh. No, no, no. It's it's. But you're. you're Hopefully, start... this one is. This one's inspirational. Just for the you know believers. Yes. Yeah. You're amazing. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, Daryl. So proud of you. You're Thank right. you. The thing.